All it takes is for one miracle, just one, to have happened, and the entire edifice of atheistic naturalism falls to the ground. I want to speak with you today about the enormous evidence that there is for miracles today and how they can challenge us to think again about the probability of the existence of God. Let's get into it. <music> 20th century theologian Rudolf Bultmann argued that it's impossible to use the electric light or the radio and to believe in the New Testament world of spirits and miracles. Many modern people believe that essentially we have a choice. We can be rational and scientific, or we can be religious and superstitious and believe that miracles happen. I want to say that actually there is enormous evidence for the occurrence of miracles and that the atheist is in a precarious position epistemically because all it takes is for just one miracle to have happened, just one, and the hard atheist position is no longer tenable. So what is the evidence for miracles today? Famous skeptic atheist David Hume was able to get away in his day with arguing that uniform human experience excludes the possibility of miracles and that there are no credible eyewitnesses to miracles. But since Hume, there have been numerous academic studies looking at this issue of eyewitness testimony to miracles. If you want to research this issue of miracles in more detail, I would highly recommend scholar Craig Keener's book, Miracles. It is a fascinating and meticulously researched analysis that to me argues very persuasively for the reality of miracles today. At one point, he cites a 2006 Pew Forum survey of Pentecostals and Charismatics in 10 countries. If you take the figures and add them up, for these countries alone, and just these denominations, the estimated total of those who claim to be witnesses of divine healing is around 200 million people. So when skeptics like Hume argue that there are no credible eyewitnesses to miracles, he's greeted now with at least 200 million people saying, we saw divine healing take place. That's 200 million people. Now, some of those will inevitably be wrong or exaggerated, of course. But is anyone going to seriously argue that all 200 million people are mistaken? Personally, I think that is a far more dubious philosophical move than it is to assume that a substantial number of these eyewitness accounts are genuine. Now that's just Pentecostal and charismatic denominations. But what about the other denominations? Well, the survey indicates that around 39% of the other denominations, that is not Pentecostal or charismatic denominations, claim to have experienced divine healing. In his book, Keener estimates that globally around one third of all Christians claim to be eyewitnesses to events of divine healing. We're talking here about hundreds and hundreds of millions of people. We have overwhelming eyewitness evidence here for the reality of miracles. Now you might say, well, these people already believed in God. They were biased in their assessment of the facts. But in 2000, there was a study in China that estimated around half of all the conversions taking place there from various ancestral religions were the direct result of experiences of divine healing. These were not Christians in any way, and often the conversions resulted in severe persecution from the state. There are also fascinating studies and accounts now of miracles happening in the West, including resurrection from the dead. It seems then that Hume's assumption that there are no credible eyewitnesses to miracles is utterly unconvincing in the face of hundreds of millions of people who claim to have experienced exactly that. Now, there is a huge question around why one person gets healed and another person doesn't get healed. But that's a different issue, perhaps for a different video. But right now, what I want to suggest is that dismissing the experience of hundreds of millions of people is a far more dubious philosophical move than it is to take at least some of their claims seriously. The widespread claims to miracles don't prove that God exists, 
but they do suggest that the hard atheist position might turn out to be too simple. In my own church, I know a woman whose mother-in-law was severely disabled and unable to walk. She was anointed and prayed for for healing and she was healed and remained healed for the rest of her life. I saw an interview recently with Pastor Francis Chan speaking about some of his mission trips to Burma. A woman came with a big swollen um, abscess on her face. And as he prayed for her, he talks about how the abscess literally went down as they were praying. Interestingly, many of the well-documented miracles that I read about tend to happen on the mission field when Christianity is going into parts of the world where people have never even heard of Jesus. It's just a fascinating fact on the ground. So the issue of why some people are healed and others aren't is an important issue for perhaps for another video. I want to say, however, that I understand that question and that feeling. I get it. Uh, my mum was a Christian who got cancer and wasn't healed, despite people praying that she would be. So this issue of healing can be a confusing and mysterious issue sometimes. But I think it's important that we don't allow that issue to get in the way of us assessing the substantial evidence that there is in favour of miracles these hundreds of millions of people claiming to have experienced divine healing. Ultimately, we can only reject the overwhelming eyewitness evidence of miracles if we adopt a worldview which excludes this evidence in advance. However, when this evidence is taken seriously, I think it powerfully calls into question some of the atheistic and naturalistic assumptions that we have in the West and encourages us to remain open to the possibility of miracles. I'm Matthew White, this is Skeptic Space. Thanks so much for watching. If you're finding these videos helpful, then consider subscribing.